As nerdy as it may sound, it's an exciting time to be a PC builder. With Intel releasing an entire stack of 7th generation processors, AMD on the verge of a big release, and Vega and possibly even Volta on the coming horizon. Correspondingly, board partner manufacturers have begun to release supporting hardware for the new platforms as we saw in abundance at CES 2017. Unfortunately, initial testing of Intel's new Kaby Lake CPUs has revealed slightly disappointing results on an instruction per clock basis when compared to the 6th generation Skylake chips. Still, if you take a look at strict, out-of-the-box performance, Kaby Lake CPUs do outperform their Skylake equivalents. Considering that they still come in at a similar price point to Skylake, it would seem incorrect to choose a Skylake chip over a KB Lake chip at this time. But which KB Lake chip is for you? Which one offers the best performance for what you need? Which one is going to give you the best bang for your hard-earned buck? Let's find out. So for the purposes of this video, I think it would have been slightly impractical to try to test out all 26 SKUs that use the KB Lake architecture. I decided that four processors best represented the different market segments that prospective buyers might be a part of. Starting at the bottom, we have the Pentium G4620. Unlike the previous generation of chips, the budget Pentium line now comes with hyper-threading, giving a significant performance boost to the sub $100 category. This is the highest clock Pentium at 3.7 GHz and comes in at a still reasonable $93. Next up, I chose the i3-7100. Now I'm sure a lot of people are anxious to see more performance numbers from the 7350K, the first ever i3 that comes with an unlocked multiplier. There's an issue with this chip though that I'm having a difficult time getting past. This is a $190 i3. No matter what kind of performance gains the ability to overclock will net you, the fact remains that you'd be better off spending an additional 10 bucks and buying a locked i5-7500. If your goal is to build a budget machine, you're not spending $190 on a processor. If your aim is for a mid-range system, you're not buying an i3. So why does the 7350K exist? I kind of have a hard time wrapping my brain around it. The 7100 is a $119 chip that gives you two cores at 3.9 gigahertz and should still be a nice budget gaming option. Of course, to round out our testing, we needed to include the two high-end unlocked i5 and i7 chips, the 7600K and the 7700K. Right now, these are actually selling for their MSRPs of $249 and $349 respectively, which is a really great thing to see after the fiasco that happened during the Skylake launch. Those looking to build systems around these chips are aiming for excellent gaming performance and strong multitasking support. So what's our testing methodology? Well, I wanted to try to compare the performance of each chip, not only in an empirical sense, but also in a price to performance manner. How much relative value can you expect from each processor? In order to sort this out, I ran five different tests on all processors at stock speeds, then I overclocked the K-SKU chip to their highest stable point and re-ran the tests. The tests in question are Cinebench R15, Geekbench, Ada64 CPU Queen, Firestrike Physics, and the CPU frame rate in Ashes of the Singularity. I did some simple math and figured out performance ratios for Cinebench, as well as the FPS per dollar I was seeing in Ashes. Then took the results and charted the processor's total performance against a baseline, with the Pentium chip being assigned a score of 100. I was able to get the 7700K stable at 5.15 gigahertz. However, I didn't have quite as much luck with the 7600K, which was unstable at anything higher than 4.7. All tests were run using the Aorus Z270X Gaming 7 that I reviewed up here, along with 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4-2400, a GTX 1070 Founders Edition, and an ADATA 240 gig SSD. Cooling for the processors was provided by a Corsair H110i GTX. I'm gonna go
So a couple of interesting conclusions can be drawn here. While the 7700K is obviously the best performer of the group and is likely the choice for many enthusiasts, it gets poor marks in the value category, scoring at or near the bottom in both. Similarly, the Pentium, while putting up the weakest performance numbers, still manages to shine when measuring how much processing power you're getting for your dollar. Interestingly, the addition of hyperthreading to the G4620 has put it almost on the same performance level as the i3 at a significantly lower price, which is bad news for the i3 line as a whole. It seems that Intel has unintentionally obsoleted the entire i3 stack with the higher end Pentiums performing almost identically as the low end i3 and the high end i3 costing almost as much as an i5. It would be hard for me to recommend any Core 3 at all right now for those reasons. So what chip do you choose for your next build? Are you waiting for Ryzen? Are you still satisfied with your older platform chip's performance and will wait it out until something groundbreaking comes along? Let me know down below in the comments and get subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.